April 15, 1928. This was the day that my father's grandparents emigrated from the Netherlands into the United States. They came to the United States with the American dream of farming off the land, and ended up settling down in northwest New Jersey where they purchased a farm and specialized in dairy production. My father was born in 1948, which is right around the same time that pesticide use became prevalent in American agriculture. Pesticide use in agriculture dates back to the times of ancient Romans and has documented use in the United States in the late 19th century, but it wasn't prevalent until after World War II when chemicals such as DDT were introduced. These new, highly effective and relatively inexpensive pesticides were able to prevent, destroy, repel, and mitigate pests in a fashion unrivaled by any product or practice seen before. Application of these new pesticides reaped many benefits for farmers and consumers. They allowed farmers to produce on a bigger level and they allowed consumers access to blemish and insect free commodities. Unfortunately, due to the effectiveness of these pesticides, farmers began recklessly over applying them in hopes of converting natural land into agricultural land. It wasn't until 1962 that the public became more aware of pesticides' unintended effects when American biologist Rachel Carson suggested that the indiscriminate use of DDT might cause cancer in humans as well as it might have detrimental impacts on the surrounding environments and wildlife, especially in bird species due to the thinning effect that DDT has on eggshells. This caused a public outcry that eventually led to the EPA banning DDT for agricultural use in 1972. The banning of the harmful pesticide DDT has been deemed one of the major events leading to the United States environmental movement. Unfortunately, this movement has tended to pit agricultural producers against environmental advocates. Fortunately, in the last 40 years, scientific research has been able to find somewhat of a middle ground between the two. We now know that pesticide use is necessary to keep agricultural production at its current rate, as well as to keep agricultural commodity prices low. With that being said, we are also now more aware of the impacts that pesticide application can have. With this knowledge, we've been able to design various integrated pest management practices. These practices are effective, environmentally sensitive, and are aimed towards reducing the need for pesticide use. A good example comes from my home county of Napa. The Napa Valley contains over 40,000 acres of vineyards, which generate over $400 million in revenue annually. So pest control is a matter of livelihood for wineries, especially small-scale wineries such as my family's. Integrated pest management practices are heavily used in Napa Valley. Common practices include integration of beneficial organisms such as owls and owl boxes, raptors and raptor roosts, and cover crops for beneficial insects. IPMs also include the integration of insect traps and vineyards with the hopes of finding detrimental pests before they have the chance of reproducing and spreading throughout the valley. Unfortunately, integrated pest management isn't always enough. In 2009, Lobesia botrana, otherwise known as the European grapevine moth, made its first unwelcome appearance in the Napa Valley. It was found in an insect trap in Oakville, but it had already reproduced. This resulted in certain areas becoming quarantined, including my family's property. The larvae of the European grapevine moth began webbing and feeding inside of the berries and bunches, contaminating them with excrement. This is the most detrimental stage of their pitiful lives. These larvae also pose other threats such as risk of infection by Botrytis cinerea and other secondary fungi, which further ruin the harvest. For the European grapevine moth, a combination of integrated pest management and controlled pesticide application has been the greatest control measure so far. Grape growers have been setting traps to assess the moth's habitat, implementing synthetic pheromones to disrupt mating, and even spraying pesticides at specific times in the season. The Napa Valley is currently going through a promising transition. It is home to a potentially detrimental pest problem, but grape growers and environmental advocates are working together and are combining their knowledge for the greater good of the community. I believe this provides a template for the future of U.S. agriculture. Thank you.